All right, everybody, this is Ross. In today's video, we are gonna be looking at some winter prep uh, of the fig trees. Specifically, we're gonna talk about hardiness in today's video. What makes certain fig varieties hardier than others, or what just makes a fig tree hardy uh, to begin with? And I don't necessarily know the answer. Um, I'm not gonna to pretend to know the answer, but there is a theory that exists. There's a couple theories really that exist, uh, but one that uh, a friend of mine named Sergio Carlini in Italy has come up with, and he's published his thoughts um, on planetfig.com. For anyone that's probably seen this article and maybe heard me talk about this article before, because I've, I've mentioned it before here on the channel probably a few times. And essentially the the theory is that depending on the level of hardiness, or depending on the level of lignification that these trees achieve, the hardier they will be, and of course be able to withstand uh, colder temperatures. So I'm sort of of this theory that it doesn't necessarily, I, I don't know how much of the, you know, what is it about the genetics? of a particular variety, like this one here is Colonel Littman's Black Cross. And you could say, you know, what is it about the genetics of Colonel Littman's Black Cross that would say it's hardy? What is it in the genetic code? And I, I really don't know. Is there something, is there some gene that will just allow it to withstand colder temperatures? I don't know. Um, I seem to think that there's a lot at play here. Uh, because maybe there is a gene that says, well, this fig is just going to be able to put up with these temperatures and this fig isn't, you know. Um, I have a feeling that a lot of it has to do, again, with some of these outside factors that could be at play. Um, you know, of course, there's things like wind and desiccation and, um, you know, there's also the duration of the temperature. You know, it's not just enough for these trees to get down to zero degrees, but how long was it zero degrees out here? Uh, also, the, um, you know, those, uh, those cycles that the tree goes through, the freeze-thaw cycles that happens in the wintertime when temperatures are very cold and these trees tend to uh, freeze up and constrict. And by constricting, that's sort of their natural defense against colder temperatures. A lot of plants do that. And then when the temperatures warm up a bit, they actually thaw out and then they start to uh, not constrict and expand. And that process of the constricting and the expanding actually causes these trees to lose some moisture within them. Um, there's other thoughts that maybe you could suggest that the sunlight has something to do with it in the wintertime and that maybe the fact that the sunlight's hitting them is also sort of drying them out. Um, there's all kinds of weird theories out there that people people have and um, I think a lot of it one of these outside sources maybe that has something to do really with the genetics is let's look at instead of maybe some gene that says it can withstand a certain temperature what about the gene that says when this tree is gonna uh, really start to die off in the fall go to sleep right when is the tree going to start to go dormant, drop its leaves? Every variety does this at a different rate. Every variety seems to go to sleep faster. Uh, also, when does that process start, if you think about it? Um, if, this, if a tree is gonna really start to kinda go into hibernation mode and really start to prepare for the winter time, when exactly does that start? Does it start maybe a couple weeks before frost? does it start actually a couple months before frost? And I would argue personally that this process for some of these varieties actually started a while ago. And um, what I'm sort of noticing here, just observationally, is that certain trees just stop growing um, a little bit sooner than other trees do. Um, which then, of course, if they stop growing, they're going to then focus a bit more on lignification because if these trees here continue to grow as the fall progresses before we get to frost, it's going to have a lot of growth that's not lignified. And if it's not lignified, I've talked about in many discussions now, 
then you kind of have the situation where the frost comes in, zaps that growth that is not lignified, and then the tree takes damage. And who knows how far down the tree that damage can go? Um, who knows really what biological effects that kind of has? I, I certainly don't know. Um, so it's, it's really, I think, important to really focus on the lignification of these trees, and we've talked a lot about that. Um, so I kind of have this theory. I'm gonna, what I'm going to do is really just walk you guys around. We'll just show you guys some of the trees that some are just better lignified than others. And, and it, it's not just, I think, I'll also add, it's not just really important to think about um, you know, if a tree is indeed lignified, because this tree here is Neruciola de Elba, and it certainly is lignified, right? You could definitely say that. This is not bending in any way. It's not filled with, uh, it's not a very soft branch, right? This is still, this is very hard and lignified. I guess that's kind of one way to put it, but it's also green. It's not fully brown just yet. And if you go further down the tree, the more lignified the branches become and they start to turn from this half greenish brown color down to a lighter brown and then when you get to the very bottom of the tree it gets to a darker brown and then of course the older wood down there is like silver right it's gray so you know what how what is like the exact amount of lignification that's appropriate to be able to withstand the colder temperatures you know um, it, there's just so many questions with this. I would argue, at least so far, just looking at my trees, we're going to go around and evaluate just how lignified some of these trees are. Um, we're going to show you really the, the varieties, I think, that are really well lignified or as good as they're going to get, I guess. And then the varieties that are not. Like, see this tree back here? It's the tallest tree in my yard. It's taller than even trees that are a couple years older. Um, that right there is Smith. <laughs> and what you know about Smith is that it's one of the least hardiest varieties. Why is that? Well, maybe because it just continues to grow. It grows faster than most other varieties and maybe it just doesn't die off as quickly and the lignification just isn't there. Colonel Littman's here, Black Cross is what I'm looking at. This one seems pretty decent. Um, however, on this branch, it's actually got a good amount of growth here that's still not even brown. The last little point, I guess the last little detail about this is that there is a, a second stage of lignification that these trees go through. And um, I don't think it's really discussed all that well, which is kind of where you'll end up seeing someone like Sergio who has posted his, his thoughts on planet fig in that article that I was mentioning in that you'll end up seeing like on a lot of these trees like my potted trees I have pretty much stopped watering these guys you know um, the water is really what controls the growth so in his article he mentions very in a very difficult way to understand the article took me a couple years even just to understand it but essentially by watering these figs and having uh, you know enough soil moisture throughout the summer they're going to continue to grow throughout the summer and what's going to end up happening is that they're not going to lignify very well in time and my potted trees are a very good distinction of this because you'll see every single potted tree here it doesn't matter what variety it is every single one of these are basically fully 100 percent lignified and brown and um now, again, it goes back to that question, well, what does it mean exactly to be 100% fully lignified? Because you can make an argument, well, this, bran this branch is totally brown. But is it 100% lignified? I don't know, because I think there's additional stages, additional steps in the lignification process that's not really well described in much of any information out there on figs. And Sergio was really the one to make this apparent. And it took me so long because it's, you know, he's Italian and he had to basically translate all of his information. But essentially he describes that the wood becomes almost uh, a little bit desiccated. 
the wood becomes a bit shriveled. I can't remember what, you, what word he uses. But on a lot of my cuttings in the past, and some of you guys have commented on this and when you guys purchase my cuttings, is that they have this um, shriveled-like appearance. Let me zoom in so you guys can get like a decent view of what I'm talking about. But you can see those like lines in there and it almost looks like the cutting has lost moisture. See those lines that kind of makes it, they're going this way. See that right there? That kind of makes it look like it's, it's shriveled and, and doesn't have a whole lot of water in it. And again, some of you guys have commented on, you know, after receiving cuttings from me and say they look desiccated, they look like they're, they're missing some water. And I respond, well, how could that be possible? I just took the cuttings right off the tree. And I think a lot of it has to do with the soil moisture. In fact, if you can um, really just uh, keep the soil moisture low at the end of the summer, as we've talked about a lot, you know, sometime around August here in this climate, you really want to just stop watering for the most part, really limit as much water as possible, which is very easy to do in these pots. It's much more difficult in the soil over here because it's so heavy and it, you, it just rains, right? There's nothing really you can do about it. But what inevitably ends up happening in these pots is that the wood becomes really well lignified. And I think that's the next step. It's not just enough for the wood to be brown, but Sergio mentions in his article on Planet Fig, I'll, I'll put the link in the description, guys, that it's really important to have these the wood shriveled a bit, I think is the word he uses. I can't remember exactly. But when it gets this shriveled-like appearance, it should be able to withstand colder temperatures than not. And, you know, there should be a, a basically a, a line, you know, kind of just your standard graph, depending on, you know, how, um, how cold it gets, you also need a, a line going across on a graph that says, well, how lignified is the tree? So the better the lignification, the better the temperature it could withstand. The worse the lignification, you know, the higher the temperature it's going to be able to withstand. So it's really, I think, important, this little key, little bit of information to kind of separate, I think, the men from the boys in terms of getting our, our fig trees just completely lignified. Like here's another branch. This is like totally brown and pro probably just a little bit shriveled. I would say on average the the growth this year is not as shriveled as in others because I have not been controlling I've not been controlling the soil moisture in the pots nearly as I have nearly as well as I have in other years. So it's a little bit difficult for me to get back in here though. Um, but let me just try my best to go across through here, guys. Now, younger trees are not going to do well with lignification, and that's usually why I, I believe that younger trees don't do well the first year after you plant them, is that they just grow and grow and grow. So the, the longer that these trees are in the ground, I suspect the better they're gonna be able to do with the soil moisture. Um, most of these varieties here, guys, are just not all that impressive, and it, it does also, really depend on the location. So if I have a, a, a more wet spot, and it seems like this area of the yard, the south southern exposure I have of the figs, just doesn't, it doesn't do nearly as well. This is about, I would say this growth here is about average, where maybe the top four to six inches of growth is half green, half brown. Um, that right there was uh, the Dow Oso. Again, most of these, I think, in this corner here about average. This is Fico Love, which maybe is slightly above average. Um, some of them are obviously a bit worse, and you can see you know, how much growth, and maybe even if some of this is a bit bendy and not hardened up. I would say just across the board here, I'm gonna get out of this mess of trees I have. They're way taller than me, by the way, guys. And the, the absolute worst one of the bunch is the Smith. It is completely, and I can't even show you guys, it's just really not lignified um, much at all. I'm gonna see if I can bend this, this branch down. Now you can see the wood down here. This is lignified. I wouldn't say great, 
there's even some spots in here that are a little green. Right here, it's green, and this is about at the about at my height. Anything above this, I have about another two feet of growth above my height that is not lignified well. And if I bend down this giant 10 foot, well, this is like 12 foot tall at this point, and I look at the top, it's just not lignified well. Um, so I would say Smith's probably the worst of the bunch. And again, it goes back to really how much the tree is growing throughout the summer and when it stops, when it starts to slow down. Um, also, how fast, I guess, these varieties potentially lignify, right? Let's get out of this mess. All right, I'm gonna take you guys around to the other side of the yard in just a minute, but most of these varieties here, guys, are just average i mean this is italian 258 maybe slightly even below average um and i would say really just the overwhelming majority of the trees in this southern exposure not good and the only thing i can really blame is water which is kind of strange because i would imagine that area there being one of the driest now i do have another area over here which a lot of the trees in here didn't grow all that well this year. And because they didn't grow all that well or all that much, we end up having, for the most part, better lignification. If you can really limit that soil moisture, this is even a very young tree here. And it's pretty, it's better lignified than any of the trees we just looked at. Same thing with this one right here. These are all very young. They didn't grow all that well. They didn't produce any fruits. Here's a pastelier that's almost perfect. By the way, I wanted to show you the pastelier where we just were. Um, I forgot. But essentially, the pastelier, guys, in the corner, that's actually by the gutter. I don't even know if you guys can see it. I'm not going to go back in there, but that is probably the best tree in this whole southern exposure is the pastelier. And what do we know about pastelier is that it's... A hardy variety that's one of the few that has been proven to be hardier than most and there it is over there amongst all the other trees that is what has way better lignification than the rest of them look there's some wine cap mushroom down there but it's the same thing over here with some of these pastelliers i have this is a pastelier almost fully lignified as good as my potted trees almost another pastelier same thing um this is a col de dom that just didn't grow because I transplanted it in sometime in the summer. And therefore the growth is completely lignified. Here's the godfather. I mean, most of these guys just stopped growing at a certain point and therefore the lignification's pretty darn good. Here's a Fico Seco, I believe this is. It's Moro de Caneva, almost completely lignified. This is a Constans, which is a pastelier type that grows very vigorously. So, and it's not well lignified. So you can see this is the one tree pretty much of this whole area that grew the most and is lignified the least. And that's one question people ask me all the time. They're like, and I'm sure some of you guys were like, holy crap, Ross, your trees are huge, right? You're looking at these trees over here and you're thinking, oh my God, Ross, why are your trees so big? Um, that's amazing, right? Well, it's not. Here in this climate, it's not. <laughs> I don't want them to grow very quickly. Um, here is a Ronde Bordeaux that is right next to the gutter of my house. I believe the gutter is over here. I know there is no gutter here, but the rain uh, kind of comes out of here at the top on the corner and drips down and I think personally this Ronde Bordeaux because it has access to a lot of moisture really is not well lignified. I don't know if that's the case it would have if it was in a different location but I can tell you this is a wetter spot for sure and this for that reason um, it's not well lignified. 
Whereas if I look and show you guys pretty much all these trees here on the west side, it's a huge dramatic difference in lignification. Um, here's a holier LSU Huye, which actually is one of the best out of all the in-ground trees. I'm really pleased and happy to see that. So you could imagine, and it hasn't really been proven, I don't think anyone's really tested it all that much, but you could imagine, look, here's some sultane that's ripening down here. I didn't even notice this. And they split, that's a shame. Well, those are not edible. It's too late in the season at this point. Um, here's white Marseille. It's one of the most hardy varieties that exists. And only really the top two leaves, top three leaves and up, are not lignified well. Whereas the rest of this, the majority of this growth, is lignified super, super well. Um, here's a younger tree here that grew a lot and has a lot of growth, unfortunately, that's not lignified. I would say for this location uh, of the yard, here's actually Nerino. This one's doing really well. You can see how lignified that is at the top compared to some of the other trees we just looked at on the, uh, on the south side. I would say maybe something like this over here is about the average for this side of the yard. So anything doing better than that, uh, like Nerino and, and Huye, uh, I think even LSU Tiger, yeah, even LSU Tiger is doing really well, which is a very vigorous tree but it stopped growing um, at the right time. It died off early. And LSU Tiger is said to be one of the hardier varieties. Um, people are claiming that it does have some hardiness to it. Here's another Nerino or Moro de Caneva and uh, not as lignified as the other one, but still not that bad. Now, I think the real big winner well, let me just show you real quick a couple more. Here's Long to Do. This is a historically a very hardy variety. Um, definitely a very hardy variety, and it's got pretty good lignification. I would say it's better than most, if not all, of the trees on the south side, and it's slightly above average for this location. Um, here's Champagne, which is probably slightly below average. Might be either average or below average. Um, but here's the, here's like the thing before I, here's actually some Moro de Caneva that's ripening. Hmm. Maybe I'll get to eat those before frost. Here is a uh, the Greta that I can't even tell. It's got such a weird colored wood. I can't even tell how lignified that is. Here's one that's like basically perfect. This is the best one I think out of all the varieties, and it really just writes the point home because, um, you know, it's said, it literally has been written, and people believe that uh, Campaneri is the hardiest variety out there right now. There's also St. Martin, and you got to think about the hardy Chicago types, but this uh, Campaneri here is basically almost lignified as much as the potted trees and that's a huge huge sign of hardiness i think i mean doesn't that just write the point home if that is literally the best i mean look at that there's almost no green on some of this growth i mean some of these branches is like wow you know so it must be hardy all right i mean I, I don't know, I'm drawing conclusions really without any proof, but if you think about for a second, the varieties I just showed you guys, um, and if you just kind of go, like I just went over all of these with you guys for the most part, you know? So the least lignified tree on my property was Smith. And Smith is notorious for not being hardy. Campaneri has a reputation for being hardy, and it's one of, if not the most hardy uh, figs, and also, I'm sorry, the most lignified figs on my property. Same thing with uh, Pastelier. So 
to me, it just kind of makes sense. Uh, Nerino, Moro de Caneva is supposed to be pretty hardy as well, and I would say that fits along well. Long de Dute somehow fits along well. LSU Huye, you know, some of these varieties. White Marseille. Is it just coincidence? Am I making this stuff up? Am I really... Obviously, we can't prove anything, right? I mean, this isn't a scientific experiment, but, you know, you got to be able to use some of this anecdotal evidence and say, well, this must be true or, or close to true, right? Um, so that's what I'm... I think it was just completely, just very, very interesting. Um, and I'll leave you guys with one last point. The issue, though, with growing figs in this climate is that it's just so darn rainy. We just have too much soil moisture. So if we have too much soil moisture, the wood is never gonna lignify like it does in the pots. And I've left my pots outside, guys, 14 degrees Fahrenheit. They withstood, didn't take any damage. So you have to think, you know, if these trees are less lignified than the potted trees, I don't know how much further these trees can really go down, you know? And I imagine the, the, of course, the older these trees get, the hardier they become because of the moisture, right? It has any, nothing, I don't think it has really much at all to do with the age of the wood. I think it has a lot to do with the moisture in the soil and that these older trees, they spread their roots out a bit further, they get themselves dug in, and therefore they're able to withstand a large change in moisture and it's not as uh, heavily uh, affecting them as it would be, let's say, if they were in a pot or let's say if they were a young tree in the ground, um, they're going to continue to grow and grow and grow. But an old mature tree might slow down and say, well, even if it's raining an inch or two, I'm not going to be affected by this. I'm going to continue on with what my genetics are telling me and saying it's time to go to sleep. I don't know. Interesting topic, right, guys? So. We'll see everybody soon, all right? Thank you, guys. If you got to this point, please hit that subscribe button. We'll see everybody soon for the next one. We're going to talk way more about winter prep. Stay tuned for that. Uh, see you guys for the next video. Take care.